Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of his word and family. I want to thank each and every last one of you for being right back here this Friday night with the royal family and of course family, of course. Y'all already know we cannot go without saying this. I want to wish every king Every queen, every prince, and every princess, I want to wish you a wonderful, magnificent Sabbath. And once again, thank you for bringing us in with your brother this week and family, 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 family. <laughs> the hate group. So apparently, <laughs> and this is nothing brand new. We've known this for a long time. That the other nations, especially Esau, <laughs> have the audacity to call our people, blacks, Hispanics, and, and Native Americans, those individuals who are studying the truth, they have the audacity, or as some say, the caucasity, to call us a hate group. But what we're going to do here tonight, family, and I, I'm not going to pull any punches either. I'm not pulling one punch. We are going to hit these scriptures up. We're going to see exactly who the true hate group is, and not only that, but after tonight's lesson, you are going to know that all of these Edomites know exactly what's going on, and they are preparing. But the thing is, I want to make sure that you understand. A lot of our family don't. A lot of our people still have no idea. They are still so caught up in the BS in the world. For instance, and Queen Tanya, King Walik, this is for y'all. The individual who... Cares absolutely nothing about the truth, but he wants to drive a Ferrari. He's more interested in that than the saving of our people. They know what I'm talking about, and many of you know what I'm talking about, too, if you've seen it. Now, family, the first thing that we're going to do here, <laughs> we're going to kick this off because I want to set the tone for this entire lesson. I want to introduce you to an Edomite. His name is Eric Stone. So without any further ado, I'm not going to run my mouth, family. Let's just go ahead and take a look at what Mr. Stone has to say. And we're going to get this lesson kicked off. All right. So without any further ado, here we go. White people are still the best race. Okay, first off, this guy is mad because I said Columbus didn't discover this country, which is fucking true because you can't discover a land where people already fucking occupy it. Second, if white people are the fucking best race and best at fucking everything, then how come black people are better at music, dancing, sports? They beat us in every fucking game. And black women even test better than everybody else in this fucking country in the school system. Fuck it. They even taught us about fucking hygiene. The only thing white people are good at is stealing, colonizing, and claiming it as theirs, and then building a society where we're like, you know what, be grateful for what we gave you. When we built our riches off their fucking slave work. Every year I gotta have this fucking debate on my fucking birthday, and it's fucking annoying. Fuck Columbus. My name is Eric Stone. Dosis. Alright, so now, that is not mine. That is not something that I produced. That man said that all on his own. And if you did not have the opportunity to read the text above, right, what, what this other person was telling him, he was telling him, yo, relax, you're white, whites are the superior race, calm down because you're white. So not only did Mr. Stone realize that that was the absolute worst truth that anybody could ever try to put forth possible because it's a lie. Let's go ahead. We're going to jump in these scriptures. So family, please. Open your Bibles to the 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. Oh, my blood. Oh, I can feel my blood moving every time I say that. Oh, gosh. Because right now, we usually will go to Deuteronomy 7.6, but we know all about Deuteronomy 7.6. I want to go elsewhere. <laughs> I want you to please go to the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah. We're going to have fun tonight. Oh, baby, we're going to have fun tonight. And we are going to start with chapter 1 at verse 1. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 1. And we're going to read it down a little bit, okay? So here we go. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. It came also in the days 
of Joachim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. So now here is going to show you that this is talking about Israel, the ones in captivity. Verse four, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. <laughs> and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctioned thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now stop. If any of you remember the lesson from last week, we talked about that, didn't we? So now we're going to go ahead and get a precept for what we read about last week. So now remember what you just read right here. I want you to go to Luke chapter two and verse 23, please. The book of Luke chapter two and verse 23. Let's see if this happens to correlate with each other. Watch this. And behold, excuse me, uh, verse 23, I'm an idiot. I'm reading 25, 23. Verse 23, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy unto the Lord. Holy, separate, sanctified, chosen, chosen. Now, Old Testament, New Testament, New Testament, Old Testament. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So there it is right there. So now let's go back. I want to read that one more time. Jeremiah chapter one, go down to verse five. One more time, please. Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. Here it is. Before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee. So the father's like, first and foremost, before you were even a thought of your, one of your greatest grandfathers, you was already created. <laughs> That's so great. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, just like we read, I sanctified thee. I separated you because you're special. Now, this one right here is speaking in regards to all of Israel, but... When we go and we look at Luke chapter 2 and verse 23, it tells you specifically about how special the man of Israel truly, truly is. Not taking anything away from our sisters. Queens, please don't think like that. But the father does emphasize when it comes to the kings and the princes. Why? Because we're the priests. That's why. So don't be feeling left out because that's not the case. That's what we're reading here right now. One more time, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So we are special. And not only that, but according to the scriptures, according to Deuteronomy 7, 6, according to Deuteronomy 14, 2, all over the scriptures, we are that superior Superior people, a special people unto the most high God himself. No one else. Nobody else. The father said, y'all belong to me. Mm. The creator of everything said, we belong to him. There's nothing else to talk about there, okay? So now that we have that. Now, family, we're going to start getting into this because I want to show you another video. And again, I'm not even going to do a setup. I'm just going to throw these videos out there so that y'all can see them as they come up. Now, many of you may have seen this one already, but I know many of you probably haven't either. So I'm going to show this here without any further ado, family. Here we go. Not every white person in this room who would be happy to be treated as this society in general treats our citizens, our black citizens. If you, as a white person, would be happy to receive the same treatment that our black citizens do in this society, please stand. You didn't understand the directions. If you white folks want to be treated the way blacks are in this society, stand. Nobody's standing here. That says very plainly that you know what's happening. 
You know you don't want it for you. I want to know why you're so willing to accept it or to allow it to happen for others. You see, <laughs> you cannot make this up. Not one. Not one of them stood up. Not one. And do you know why? Because none of them ever wanted to trade places what we have gone through or what we have endured. None of them. They all know. They all know. You see, I'm showing this here to you because I want y'all to understand the term systemic racism. You see, systemic racism is generational. Their mothers and fathers taught them. Their parents' mothers and fathers taught them. Their parents' parents taught them and so on and so on and so on all the way back then. Now, you may be asking, where did this come from? Where? The Most High. The Father put that spirit on them. He did. And this is why the Father said, in the end, they got to go. They had a purpose. Had. And I have to say this now because it's past tense because they all know what's going on. They know what's about to happen to them. They know what's coming down the pike for them. Their entire race. Not because I said it. This is not hate speech. I'm reading the scriptures. Ooh, baby. And we're going to get into this here tonight. Oh, my goodness gracious. Now, I want you to please go because let's go ahead and jump into this now. I want you to go to Ezekiel chapter 35, please. The book of Ezekiel chapter 35. I'm going to start at verse one. As a matter of fact, I want to read from verse one on down. I'm telling you, family, y'all better get prepared for tonight. Y'all better get prepared. Here we go. Ezekiel chapter 35, verse one. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Prophesy against it. So the father said, son of man, talking about the Israelites, take your face, set your face against Mount Seir. Now, many of you may not know, you may not have any idea who's in Mount Seir. So of course, we're going to go right to these scriptures and we're going to get exactly who's in Mount Seir. So please, family, I want you to go to the book of Genesis chapter 36. The book of Genesis in chapter 36. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the chapter 36 in the book of Genesis, this is not only the patriarchal, but matriarchal origins of Esau. Mm. Now, remember, it just mentioned Mount Seir, right? Okay. I want you to go down to verse 8. Genesis chapter 36, go down to verse 8, and let's make sure who is the Father telling us to set our face against and who to prophesy against. Genesis chapter 36, verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. So this is who the father is telling us. But of course, I wanted to make sure that we went to the scriptures so that nobody thinks that this is my opinion that's coming out. No, 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 no. This is all scripture, baby. This is all scripture. This is the most high not playing with them, but he's telling us what to do. Now let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 35. Go down to verse. I'm, I'm going to start back at verse one. I'm going to read it again. One more time. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Set your face against Esau, against those Edomites. Why? Because as the scriptures say, they are our enemies. Verse three, and say to it, Thus saith the Lord God. In other words, tell, tell them that God said so. Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. I'm going to read that one more time for you. And say unto it, thus saith the Lord God. Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. And I will stretch out out mine hand against thee and I will make thee most desolate. 
Now, many people don't have any idea what the term desolate means. So, of course, y'all know me. Let's go ahead and get that definition of desolate. Let's get the definition of desolate and let's see exactly what the Most High told them to say. Desolate definition. Deserted of people and in a state of bleak and dismal emptiness. Whoa, emptiness. So what does it mean? It means to destroy. Them to be here no more. No more. And a lot of people think just because Esau will serve a thousand years in captivity, just like Revelation 13.9 says, just like Isaiah 14 says, these individuals are not saved in any way, shape, or fashion. Now, the remnant of them may have been, uh, what's the word I want to use? May have been left over to serve slavery for a thousand years. And then at the end, at the end of that time, at the end of that thousand years, they're done, finished. As the book of Revelation says. All right, now let's go to verse five. Because thou has had a perpetual, a everlasting continuing hatred a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity in the time that their iniquity had an end. Now we can go right back to Genesis and read about that. The father gave Esau the sword. He gave him that sword because of us. Yep. Because we didn't do what we were supposed to be doing. But it says that they had a perpetual hatred. Perpetual, a continuing hatred for our people. So when you go back and you look at that video with Jane Elliott. When you go back there and you see that. And when none of them stood up. None. That's that systemic racism. <laughs> All the way through their generations. Just like the father ordained for that to happen. Nothing new under the sun nothing so now that was that i want to stay in the book of ezekiel but go back to chapter 16. the book of ezekiel chapter 16 and i want you to go down to verse 5. <laughs> listen to this now tell me if this doesn't sound like they are one i'll say the main the main ones that are actually the hateful. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse five. None I pitied thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee, but thou wast cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. Now, do you remember we just read <laughs> last week, Luke chapter two and verse 23. What did that speak of? The black man, Hispanic, Native American man being born. And as soon as you come out the womb, what are you considered holy and sanctified? And then what do we read from there? We read two verses. So this just confirms exactly what it's saying. They hate, they, when they see you come out, even when them doctors, if you have these doctors of the other nations, but particularly Esau, when they see that young king come out, that prince, automatic hatred. I'm not saying this, this is all in scriptures. I'm not saying this, this is not my opinion. This is the scriptures speaking, not me. Has nothing to do with me. Y'all can go ahead and get mad all you want to. All you want to. Now, as you sit there and get mad, <laughs> I got another video to show you, baby. I got another one to show you. Because we're going to continue to show their perpetual hatred and just how evil, how disgustingly evil these people truly, truly are. 
So family, without any further ado, here you go. So I was going through some old newspapers and I actually found a runaway notice uh, for a slave from Kentucky who allegedly escaped, according to his master who placed the ad, with a slave collar on his neck and um, was uh, alleged to have been going towards the Ohio River. Now, if he had a slave collar on his neck, which is the contraption you'll see on the right here, um, that was put on people who either threatened to escape or people who had done it before and were captured or returned. It was meant to keep you from getting into the woods. Uh, the hooks would catch on vines and whatnot. And I thought, what if I tried to follow any information, any points of this man's journey through this one ad? So I had a picture, uh, uh, not this one, but actually a photo of a man wearing it. I took it to a blacksmith and gave it to him. He gave me a very awkward look. And I told him that I wanted him to replicate it. Um, he said, sure. He uh, demanded $150. And three days later, he called me and said, your thing is ready. <laughs> I went to pick up my thing. And before I tell you the end of that story, I'm going to demonstrate the thing. Could I get my volunteers? Now, this is a replica of a slave collar. And after I do my demonstration, I'll pass it around. We'll do show and tell. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to stand right here. You, sir, can stand right here. You stand where you are. I use a simple nut and bolt to keep this closed. And gentlemen, you're going to reach down and pick it up. And you're going to open it up. That's right. You, sir, are going to put your finger over your Adam's apple. We hope your neck is not too thick for this, and we hope we don't clip you. OK, hold on one second. Are you all right? Yeah, OK. OK, close it. Is it pinching you? Not yet. Good. Remove your finger. And I want you to put your hands on both of these bars that are extending in front of you. I will just get this on so it doesn't fall off. To date, this has never gotten stuck on anyone, so we will hope. <laughs> and my volunteers, please stand to the side, but do not sit down. OK, so I'm going to tell the rest of the story. Um, are you OK? Great. Um, this was put on, uh, on a person um, to keep them from getting into the woods. If you traveled with this, first of all, you'd stick out like a sore thumb. People would know you did something wrong. Um, you could not lay down or sleep with this. But in my mind, I had it all figured out. Um, I had seen in the woods at times where trees had fallen and were leaning up against other trees at an angle. I figured I'd wear it, uh, straddle the tree, and get a good night's sleep. I figured that if I came face to face with any danger, I could just simply take one of the prongs and you know, fight off the wild animal or whatnot. Or um, if I crossed a stream and I got wet, I could take off my clothes, put them on the prongs, and keep on running. <laughs> so I had it all figured out. I go, I pick it up, um, the man's assistants put it on my neck, and I instantly realized that I could not go on my journey wearing this thing. The reason being, if I tripped and fell, the prongs would hit the ground first, and my neck would break. That was my $150 history lesson. My other one was I paraded around in this for 20 minutes having pictures taken and then was in bed for the next three days with a sore neck and shoulders. So we're going to take that off of you. But before we do, how do you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. You know, very uncomfortable. If, if, if you stand there for 20 minutes, a half hour, you would be exhausted. OK. Thank you. Family, you cannot make up that type of evil in your brain. I don't think any of any of you are equipped. <laughs> the ingenuity behind these damn devils. 
To the point to where a person, one of our people, they couldn't sleep. So you know what they're battling? They're battling fatigue. The hurt from their shoulders. Imagine carrying around that much weight all day with no rest. None whatsoever. And you see what he said? He said, yo, the shoulders were bruised. And just to think, he couldn't go anywhere. Now, I know many of you, when you thought about that, right? You thought about, you know, big grown, grown man in there, right? What about the women? Hmm? What about the babies? Y'all think they took it easy on the babies? <laughs> Family, please go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 50, please. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 50. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> I'm telling y'all. And these people have the absolute nerve to talk about hate. <laughs> Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 50. A nation of Fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old or, excuse me, nor shew favor to the young. You see, a lot of times, yo, you don't think about what the children went through during slavery. Take a look at this. You see this? Yes, it is. Those are babies. Look at this. These people are animals. Look at our little brothers and sisters in the, in the field. Look at this. Did the Most High lie? Did the Bible lie? No. The Bible did not lie about anything. The Most High did not lie about a damn thing. Because that's exactly what they did. So now, just seriously, let's take a moment here before we get more back into the script. Let's take a moment here. The things that people don't think about when it comes to slavery and being out in those fields. And of course, depending on where you are, let's say, let's start, for instance, let's start in South, North Carolina, the Carolinas, let's start in the Carolinas, right? So as you're out there in the fields, doing what you're doing, picking whatever agriculture it is, mind you, agriculture, mind you, agriculture, mind you, agriculture. What becomes of agriculture? You know what it's called? It's called pests. So first and foremost, they are out there in the blistering sun all day. You know what they're battling? They're battling mosquitoes. Now, many people may be thinking, oh, well, man, that, what the hell? That's nothing. I don't know if any of you are allergic to mosquito bites like I am, but when I get bit by a mosquito, I swell up horribly. And it is painful. So imagine that. That's just the one besides the heat bearing down and also during the cold seasons as well. But then what else? What do you think about? What about mice? What about rats? The rats in their bins. What about the mice and the rats that's eating at their legs and their feet and crawling up their bodies? I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with how rats how they operate, rats attack you. And a mouse is known for running up a man's pant leg and biting his nuts. That's why I don't deal, I don't deal with rodents. I don't play with rodents. I don't, I don't. When I tell you I am on 100 level bitch when it comes to a rodent, I don't give a damn. I don't care who makes fun of me. I could not give two dams. If there is a rat or a mouse anywhere around, I'm out. I'm done. Finish. I know what they do, but that's just vermin. What about the bigger animals? Foxes, hmm? coyotes, wolves. What about snakes? Remember now, they out there in them cornfields, they out there in that agriculture. All the different things, tobacco, cotton, corn, Sugarcane, all those different things that animals attract to. What about that? Hmm? How about we leave the Carolinas? Let's go to Louisiana. Let's go to the Everglades. Let's go there in them areas. When they're out there dealing with the agriculture and then big ass alligators come out there and just snap, snap, snap them up. 
Snap one of the babies. Take them. Nobody even know the baby's gone. Until the alligator poops out the clothes. Y'all not thinking about how, how horrible slavery truly, truly was. Okay? Now with that being said, let's get into some meat and potatoes here. Let's get into some revenge that's coming from the God of Israel. Family, please, I want you to go to the book of Zechariah in chapter 12. The book of Zechariah chapter 12. Let's see what it says. Now, of course, this is where they start to get in and start to call us racists and all that. And we're a hate group. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with us. It has to do with the most high God of Israel. This is what he said. So if any of you Edomites that's watching this right now, anybody or even perhaps even a lot of you Israelites that's watching this right now, being like, oh, this nigga is so racist. Oh, well, you can call me racist. You can call me whatever you want to. None of it's true. We're reading what the Bible said. These are the orders of the Most High. This is what he said he's going to do. Watch this, family. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel. saith the Lord, which stretched forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. The spirit of man within him, just like we were talking about earlier. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. So now remember, this is talking about the future, not then. This is talking about future time. And in that day, just like I said, and in that day, will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all. All people, I wonder why. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. Through all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Wow. Though all the people of the earth, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. In that day. Saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness. And I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God, in the Lord of hosts, their God. In the Lord of hosts, their God. So now, why is it not saying the God versus their God? Because there's only one God of Israel and he only loves his people. That's it. He loves his people, not the whole world. The most high loves Israel. We'll get that later. Verse six. In that day, will I make... The governors of Judah like an hearth of fire among the wood and like a torch of fire in a sheaf. And they shall devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Stop. Who getting saved first? Woo! Woo! Who getting saved first? Oh my goodness gracious. Bro, I'm going to ask the question one more time. One more time. <laughs> Who's getting saved first? Family. Your black ass, Judah. We get saved first. Out of everybody. <laughs> we get saved first. Top tribe. This is why we have such a responsibility, kings and princes. This is why you have such a responsibility, queens and princesses. You got to teach. I'm telling you, a lot of us are going to stand in front the most high on that day and be, not be able to give an account for the things that we've done. 
Verse seven, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. You can't, there's nobody. <laughs> do you so-called Negro slash African-American so-called nonsense, all that BS? The tribe of Judah. Do y'all see what this says about us? Y'all better give the most highest praise. Y'all better give it to him. You better give the most high his, baby. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Verse 9. Wait, did I read 8? No. Let's go ahead and read uh, verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. So now when you go back and you think about Psalms chapter 82 and verse 6 and John chapter 10 and verse 34, and now this all starts to make sense when the father says that you are a God Verse nine, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. Verse 10, and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for only his son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Mm. So the father's like, wait a minute now. Listen, y'all, listen. <laughs> y'all are going to see all of this stuff. You're going to be able to see everything that was done. All vision. Remember, because at this point in our glorified bodies, we're going to have all access. The thoughts, everything that we was able to see. Everything. Everything that was done, we're going to be able to see. And that is why it is not going to be anything for us to bring destruction when it comes. We are going to have the visuals of everything that has taken place. Everything. I'm telling you right now. Now, I want us to now go to the book of Isaiah. The book of of Isaiah, go to uh, chapter 59, please. We're going to read this entire chapter. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59. And here we go, family. Here we go. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So family, y'all got to understand, this is explaining why all of this is being done to us because of our iniquities, because of our sin. This is a serious deal. This is a serious matter. We have to stop playing games with the Most High. We have to stop in our sin. We got to stop. We got to stop. Because that's what's keeping us separated. So right here, the father, we are not waiting on him. He is waiting on us. Verse three, for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. Now we all know what that means. Black on black crime, us killing our own brethren and sisters. Come on now, we can't be doing that. This all got to change. As a people, we must change, okay? No more blacks versus Mexicans and Mexicans versus Puerto Ricans and Puerto Ricans versus Dominicans and Dominicans versus Haitians and all that. No, this all has to stop. This is the coming together. Gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. Verse four. None call it for justice, not any pleaded for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Verse five, they hatch cockatrice eggs. Y'all get, <laughs> get that with the most high saying right there? Like, yo, y'all produce the eggs of dragons. Mm. Little monsters. Saying we bring forth little 
badass monsters. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Ooh. Snakes. Remember when the Most High was like, you generation of vipers? When Christ said that, remember? Their web shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Who is that talking about now? Come on now. Who is that? Who's the father comparing us to? He's comparing us to Esau, man. As the father said, they are the border of wickedness. Verse 7, their feet run to evil. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. Everywhere they go, every land they visit, just like Mr. Eric Stone mentioned early in this lesson. That's why I wanted to plant that seed there so that when we got into this, you knew exactly who we were talking about. Eric Stone didn't tell a lie, did he? I'm going to read this again. Their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not. Stop, stop, stop. When have you ever known Esau to be a peaceful people? Never, mm. never. All you got to do is go look at the recent police brutality. You can go back and look at the archive footage of police brutality. You can go back and look at the archive footage of the KKK and all that stuff and all the things that they've done to us. It's all there. It is all historical fact. And do you know, this just goes to show you how evil they are. Do you know that they are trying to pull all of that out of schools? Do you know that they are trying to remove slavery from the American curriculum? Do you know that? That is why it is so important for you, you, you to teach your children. Do not leave it up to the school system to teach your child. You need to be teaching your child. From where? These scriptures. This is why you need to get off your ass, get on your knees, pray to the most high, ask for clarity, ask for wisdom, sit down with your children and teach them. Verse eight. I'm going to read it one more time. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Do you understand what that is talking about? What crooked paths? It is called the American judicial system. And every time a black man take his black ass in a courtroom, you already know we are coming out on the losing end. Every time one of our sisters go up in there and we are not talking about for them bringing child support and things like that against us. When you sisters go up in there, you are not shown any mercy either. Neither our children. Their crooked paths they've made. That's right. The system that adjudicates whether you are guilty or innocent, it's crooked and you will always be guilty. Always. Verse 9. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. What is that? We are the children of the light. Do you remember the lesson? We are the Illuminati, but yet we run to darkness. We take those shades and put it right over us. We put the lampshade over our bodies when we are the actual light. Why? Because we depend on Esau. So ridiculous. We depend on them. When they're the base people, they are supposed to be depending on us. <laughs> Verse 10. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. Wow, we talked about desolate earlier, did we not? Sure did. Do you understand how much of an insult that is for the father to be like, yo, listen, y'all are going to grope at noonday. Now, what is so significant about that? Because that's when the sun is directly on top of the earth at noon. Directly on top, wherever area you're in, when it's 12 o'clock your time, 
that sun is sitting right on top of you. So even if you look up right there, the father said you still can't see the light when it's right above you because you're dealing with these damn people and we living in our sin. It's ridiculous. I want to read the last part. We are in desolate places as dead men. Why we have no life, them dry bones, the dry bones all over the place. But all praises to the most high that them dry bones are now becoming a little bit more moist every day that you happen to learn. And I'm loving it. Verse 11. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none for salvation, but it is far off from us. That's one hell of a statement to make, to be like, there is no salvation in our sights right now. None. Why? Because our people, we are still living in a conglomeration of sin amongst all of our people. That one third versus two third number, that number is real. That number is so freaking real. But the only way that that is going to be brought to your reality, you have to open your eyes. We got to open our eyes, family. We truly, truly do. Verse 12. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us and as for our iniquities, we know them. And the father, he's like, look, y'all, you look, I'm not stupid and neither are you. Y'all know y'all down there sinning. When are you going to stop? When are you going to stop your nonsense? You're going to die over it. Verse 13. In transgressing and lying against the Lord. Woo! Transgressing and lying against the Lord. And departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And judgment is turned away backwards, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey and the Lord saw it and is and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And when he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor, therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness, it sustained him. So now there's the flip. Once you become wary, once you become very noticeable, once you become aware of the sin that you are committing, Father said, let it go. Stop. Stop. Stop with the sin. Stop it. Verse 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and an helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay. Stop. Woo. What did this say? What did that say? Let's read that one more time. Why? Because it feels so good. Let's read that one more time. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay. Who is he talking about? He's talking about the other nations and the thing that they've done to us. Fury to his adversaries. Fury. Do y'all know what fury means? Let's get the definition. The definition of fury. I know you heard it before. Many of you, you know, y'all love Bruce Lee and y'all remember Fist of Fury. That's probably the only time that many of y'all heard it. But let's listen to what the definition of fury is. Wild or violent anger. Violence or energy displayed in natural phenomena or in someone's actions. Woo! The most high ain't gonna play no games when he come back. <laughs> All praises to the Father. Let's read that one more time now. 
according to their deeds, according to the things that they've done. And we know that these Edomites and these other nations have done horrible, horrific atrocities against us. According to he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands. He will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him and the redeemer shall come to Zion. Who's the redeemer family? Hmm? Who's that redeemer? Who is that? And unto them that turn from their transgressions in Jacob, saith the Lord. The father said, yo, listen, those of you that begin keeping my commandments, keep the, first of all, the, the high holy days, keep the Sabbath, all these things, all of the laws that we're supposed to follow. The father said, if you do that, I got you. Let's read that one more time. And the redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. That's Christ. That is Yahawashai. That is our big brother, the big black Messiah, coming back for his little brothers and sisters. And like, I got you. I'm going to whoop your bullies' asses, all of them, every last one of them. Anybody that spoke anything against you, and anybody that spoke anything against your animals, I'm going to whoop them. I'm going to beat them. I'm going to put them in the ground. Christ and all the chariots that's coming with him. Verse 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed. Woo! Nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. The father said, you teach, I'm going to teach you and you teach your kids and your kids are going to teach their kids and their teach, kids are going to teach their kids. Going on, going on, going on, generation after generation after generation. That is why it is so important that you open your mouth and teach. The father made that promise. If you do that, if you teach, being that he taught us, he gave you that wisdom, you teach your seeds and it will continue throughout the generations. Now, for many of us, Many of us right now, under the sound of my voice, many of us broke the generational curse. That's how important you are. And I want you to understand that. That is how important you are that the father put it on you to break the generational curse that was in your family. It doesn't matter what Big Mama said. It doesn't matter what Big Papa said. It doesn't matter what Auntie said. It don't matter what none of them said. It don't matter what Unc said. None of that. What did the most High God of Israel say, when he turned your light on, when he tapped your shoulder and said, yo, you are that one. Let's go. And because you are that one, there's going to be all these other nations out there that's going to on their air to you. They're going to listen to you. They're going to hear the things that you say. They are going to be intimidated by what you are saying. And then they're going to begin to rebel. And they're going to start running scared because you are speaking out your mouth the destruction that is coming for them. You are important. That's why so many of us are going to die. So many of us are going to die bringing out this truth. And that's okay because we don't actually die. All we do is go to sleep. The only thing that they can do is turn the light off. And then when that light goes off, we are right back in the presence of the Most High. And then when the Most High says, lights back on, we right back here. Right back. That is what they are fearing. They know what's getting ready to come to this planet. They know. They know. I know I say that all the time, but now, family, I'm going to show you another video. I'm going to show you one more. And, of course, you know, when a nigga say something, nobody likes to listen. Oh, them niggas crazy. Oh, whatever them racist ass Israelites or whatnot. But let's see if Esau actually understands exactly what's coming to this planet because of what the scriptures say. So without any further ado, family, here we go. And it is 
not, we're not shaming anybody, God. We're just humbling ourselves before you. Yes, Lord. You brought the thunder and rain today, God. Because Satan takes the L today. Father, in Jesus' name, you get the victory. Father, we ask for forgiveness from our black brothers and sisters for years and years of racism, of systematic racism. Told you. Told you. Why do you think they understand what's getting ready to go down? Huh? Please forgive us for what our forefathers and foremothers did. I'm sorry, we can't. No. No. <laughs> we didn't mean it. Yes, you did. <laughs> I get Edomites all the time coming up. <laughs> my, my. <laughs> what do we? to do my you know y'all y'all know Esau y'all know <laughs> even his scripture said that that's what he does he cries on right here but let's do it my 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 no, no. we didn't do it nigga yes you did <laughs> you nigga yes you did you did it how do we know because nigga you are your damn forefathers that's how we know <laughs> Oh, shit, I told y'all I'm in the mood tonight, boy, because this shit make me happy. I don't give a damn what nobody say. This makes me happy because this is about our salvation. This is our salvation. This is about our redemption. All of us, all of us that is sitting here and putting forth these scriptures and bringing this out and teaching and keeping the commandments, we shall all be going insane with everything that we're seeing on the news right now, everything that we're seeing, we should be losing our minds because we are seeing that these chariots are coming, baby. You can't stop these chariots from coming. Family, I want y'all to go to the book of Isaiah chapter 14. <laughs> the book of Isaiah. Let's go down to chapter 14 and uh, go down to verse 21, please. We are going to speak directly in correlation of what they were just talking about right now. And let's see if the Bible has anything to say about this here. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 21. Prepare slaughter. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon, the name and the remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord, I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction. I'm going to read that one more time. I'm going to read that one more time. And I will sweep it with the besom of destruction. Saith the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts have sworn, saying, surely, as I have thought, the Father, listen, family, listen, listen, listen to what the Most High said right here. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. The father said, I said it, I thought it, which means it's gonna happen. Mm. That don't have a damn thing to do with you. Not a damn thing. The father said, this was already predestined. This is already going to happen. You don't have to feel bad. Don't worry about nobody calling you no damn hate group. Don't worry about nobody calling you no damn racist because you're not. This is all the most high is doing. This is all his work. This is what he said he's going to do. Not us. Now, the 144, those of us men that are completely thankful and, and, and given the privilege to go fight, which all of us... Every last brother right now under the sound of my voice, we should all be fighting for that honor to go fight with Christ and the angels to go bring all this down. But the father said, this is what's going to happen. So don't let anybody try to guilt trip you. Don't have anybody try to make you feel bad, run up in your face or on the phone or on social media, wherever, talking about y'all niggas or racist or whatever. No, we're not. 
We are just, we're not, we're not racist. We're just waiting. We're going to do what the father told us to do. We are going to keep his commandments. We are going to obey what he said and keep his commandments. Bottom line, that's it. That's it. There's really not, nothing else to talk about. Nothing. And family, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. That's it. There ain't nothing else to talk about. <laughs> hey, they can say whatever they want to. But you know what they won't call us? Liars. But yeah, we're going to let these scriptures talk. That's why I tell y'all all the time, don't put your opinion in nothing. Don't lend your opinion to anything. You open up this book and you show them what it says. And if they have a problem with it, then they got to take it up with the most high. And many of them, well, how can we be saved? You can't. The father said Esau has no repentance. None. None whatsoever. Them going into the kingdom and serving us, that is not them being saved at all. I know a lot of people believe that. It's not true. Because what did the father say? Didn't the father say, if you cleave to them, that you're going to die with them? Yes, he did. Go ahead and play around and cleave with them damn Edomites and try to play that game with them and watch how you die right along with them, just like the scriptures say. Go ahead. I'm, I'm telling y'all. Y'all better keep y'all ass away from them. He said, don't do it. It doesn't mean that you have to be rude, nasty, or anything like that. It doesn't even mean that you can't sit down with them at the lunch table. Like, there ain't nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. So what? You want to sit down and talk with them? Whatever. But when the time comes, that's it. So family, I truly hope that y'all got something out this lesson. I really do. I love y'all. And I want y'all to have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Sabbath. Now, just to let everybody know in advance, we may not have a lesson next week. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. But we may not have a lesson next week. Now, if we... There's some things in my life personal that I'm going through, and I always try to make sure that I put the most highest work first, but there are just some times when, you know, like, I may not be able to, but we'll see, all right? No guarantees, but family, once again, I love y'all, and I want y'all to have a wonderful, wonderful Sabbath. I want y'all to talk to each other, love each other, kiss your babies, hug your children. You do what you got to do. If you haven't spoken to your children in a long time, tonight is that time to make that call. Y'all understand? Because I'm telling you, it's about to be over. Fast. Quick. It's coming. It's coming. And don't worry about Esau and the rest of these other nations. Don't worry about them. They'll be all right. <laughs> for now. <laughs> Until that time comes. But you saw it for yourself. So family, I love y'all. Please give all the praise to the Most High God of Israel. And I want y'all to be safe. Take care of each other. Love each other. And most importantly, show the Most High just how much you love him. By keeping his commandments. And with that being said, Israel, I love you. I'm out.